Now to President Trump's repeated and unsubstantiated claim that three to five million votes were cast illegally in the 2016 election. He set up a special commission to investigate, but one of its first acts has drawn condemnation from across the country. Harry Srinivasan is here with that. Yesterday, the vice chair of that commission sent a letter to all 50 states asking for voter data that includes addresses, party ID, voter history, and social security information. The commission asked that data be sent to the White House by mid-July, but did not say how it would be used other than to examine, quote, vulnerabilities in the system. We take a closer look now with Rick Hassan, a law professor at the University of California, Irvine. He writes the Election Law blog. Rick, the news hour has been reaching out to states all day long, and we've got nine definite no's, 18 that might comply in whole or in part, and a few other states that are still looking at it. Often what we hear from them is that there are apparently laws on the books in certain states that prohibit, even if it's public information, who can look at the information and why it can be looked at. Explain. Well, uh, some of this information, depending on the state, is available publicly. People can buy it. Some of it is not available. And in fact, uh, just before we came on, I saw a story that uh, Chris Kobach himself, the person who's asked for this information, he himself cannot produce the Social Security numbers that he's demanded because that would violate uh, the law in the state of Kansas. This doesn't seem to have been very well thought out. Uh, not only do we not know what the information is going to be used exactly to do, uh, it doesn't appear that this information even legally can be provided by a lot of the states. So Chris Kobach, as his role as Secretary of State of Kansas, can't provide the information that he's asking for, right? To himself, that's right. Got it. Right. All right. So what about the scope of the investigation? There seems to be a lot of focus on measuring or protecting the integrity, one person, one vote. I don't see any description in here about any Russian meddling that might have happened. Well, so it's not clear exactly what this commission is going to do. Initially, the president had said he wanted to look into the potential for voter fraud. Uh, there are a couple of Democrats on the commission who said that they wanted to look into Russian meddling. Uh, Kobach said he might be open to that, but uh, that wasn't on the list of questions that was sent uh, to various state election officials. It's not clear what this group is going to do, what it's going to produce, but mm -hmm. I, I'm concerned that it's going to be something that uh, is just going to try to support the president's agenda, that uh, claiming that there's a lot of voter fraud and use that to make it harder for people to be able to register to vote. Is this the kind of information that a campaign really would pay money for? Well, in some states, campaigns do pay money for this kind of information. Uh, the fact that the information is going to be sent to uh, the president's office is concerning. You know, uh, uh, rather than having outside professional staff or rather than having social scientists who study this information, uh, the, uh, we know that this information is going to, literally to the executive office of the president. Uh, we don't know how it's going to be kept. We don't know how secure it's going to be on what kind of servers. We don't have any information. But the concerns about privacy, about identity theft, about the information being used for political purposes, I think these are all legitimate questions uh, to be asked. And finally, is there a, a question here on the role of the federal government? I mean, there seemed to be some pushback from states when it came to the Department of Homeland Security going out to them saying, hey, we have this potential for hacking. We'd like to help you secure your networks. Absolutely. There's been this long tradition, especially on the Republican side, of talking about uh, federalism and states' rights in this area. And you're even seeing some pushback now from states like Mississippi that are saying they're not going to cooperate with providing this information to the federal government. All right. Rick Hassan, a professor at University of California, Irvine. Thanks so much. Thank you.